Hey everybody, this is Raul from the FEM team. So it turns out that the FEM team doesn't really rest a lot and we've been hard at work shipping M1, uh, which as Jennifer said, is gonna be going live with a SCUR upgrade on July the 6th. Uh, and just as a reminder, M1 installs the FEM technology on the network and basically transplants uh, all of chain execution into this new WASM based runtime. Uh, but also in the last weeks, uh, we've started working towards M2, which is the milestone that most people really care about because it brings the much desired feature, which is user programmability. Uh, and that is basically the ability to deploy custom contracts and actors to the network. Now, um, the first kind of workloads we'll be able to deploy to the network are EVM smart contracts. And these contracts will have the ability to interact with built-in actors. Um, and just as a reminder of how this kind of works uh, under the hood, uh, the FEM is a hypervisor inspired um, runtime uh, environment built on WASM, and it's capable of hosting contracts and programs uh, written on four different runtimes and diverse runtimes. Uh, and, provide, and the goal is to provide seamless interoperability between uh, those, those kinds of workloads. Uh, so uh, bridging kind of like translating calls and making sure that addressing and identity is well covered, cryptography and so on. Why, uh, before uh, we move forward, I wanted to just touch on one topic, which is why are we focusing on EBM programmability uh, first before native programmability? Um, and this basically is around the sentiment that we've collected in conferences. Uh, it indicates that the community is really eager uh, to build as soon as possible. And really they want us to meet them where they are today. Uh, and that basically means that many of these developers are uh, Solidity and Ethereum developers, and they want to use their existing tools and know-how to just build on Falcon and get started quickly. Um, they're also uh, very important. They stress to us that uh, the reason that they're deploying Falcon is actually to be able to use uh, the native Falcon features. So one thing that we're focusing on is on providing uh, Solidity libraries, pre compiles and so on, so that um, EVM smart contracts will be able to interact with uh, built-in built -in actors and utilize and query and so on, um, Filecoin, Filecoin features and state. Now, they also want to be able to, another advantage of focusing on this is that there's a ton, a ton of ton and a massive number of contracts uh, that have been battle tested, audited, that are production grade in the Ethereum ecosystem that will be able to basically port to Filecoin uh, in a very seamless manner. Um, and these, and also like the important thing here is that these contracts will be able to compose uh, Filecoin features. And these are things like uh, ERC-20 tokens, NFTs, and so on, which are useful primitives that then you'll want to be able to compose uh, in, in Filecoin, uh, Filecoin related features, like say for example, providing uh, provability of NFTs uh, stored uh, in or tracked by a particular NFT registry and providing provability that the data that is uh, represented by those NFTs is alive, healthy, being proven, has a specific replication factor, and so on. Um, so this doesn't mean that we're not going to focus on native programmability. It's, it's, uh, we're going to continue specifying features and specifying kind of like the design surface for native programmability so that we have a full picture, uh, but we'll focus on bringing those uh, native specific features uh, to fruition later after we bring EVM uh, about. So one thing that I wanted to stress is that um, this milestone is gonna be spec first. Uh, and now we have with M1, we shipped a solid set of baseline specs um, that we're able to work against. And this is FIP 30, 31 and 32. So if you wanna go check those out, uh, feel free to go into the FIPS repo. Um, but kind of like the spec that kicked off all of the EVM FEM work uh, is this initial parent spec that you'll find a link in, in this slide set, but it's just in the FEM specs uh, repo. We've also enumerated all of the technical areas that are gonna require further specs. So we, so the team is currently in a phase where we're doing a prototype and at the same time, we're burning through these specs uh, that uh, will help us continue refining more and more detail. So things like account abstraction for the, concretely, uh, this will bring us the ability to execute native trans native and uh, transactions that were issued from uh, Ethereum wallets like MetaMask and so on, uh, logs and event support, uh, things like how do we support the EVM delegate uh, call um, uh, opcode and a bunch of other things. So stay tuned if you want, like I would advise if you're interested in this work, uh, subscribe to FVM specs and also subscribe to the FIPS repo and watch the discussions and the, and the issues fly by.
No, this is um, this is a complex endeavor. So you're probably thinking, wow, this this sounds massive. Uh, yes, and we're aware of it. And we're also aware of the fact that there are many unknowns that we're probably just not seeing yet. So in order to uncover these unknown unknowns, uh, we embarked on an FEM, EVM FEM prototype. And shout out to Kareem. Uh, he's he's a he's a, a team member at, at the FEM project uh, who led the implementation there. Um, and yeah, we just made it public yesterday. So if you're interested in what's going on there, uh, go to that repo FEM EBM under the Falcon project uh, organization. And as of today, uh, we're able to deploy EVM bytecode and uh, run a simple coin contract that performs state reads and writes. Um, and so with that, we've got a surprise for you. We've got a small demo, which uh, Stev is gonna do live right now. Yeah. So. What we're going to do here is deploy the EVM bridge actor, um, uh, then uh, deploy uh, an EVM actor using the bridge actor, uh, using an EVM message. Uh, so the cool thing about this is literally going to take an actual EVM message, submit it to the bridge actor, uh, and then uh, execute the init code. It, this The actual workflow here is going to change a bit, or the flow here is going to change a bit um, on, on mainnet because we're trying to reduce the amount of like uh, uh, I guess an EVM specific stuff you have to do. What you'd like to do is to abstract accounts so you can just send effectively an EVM message to the chain and chain will be able to deal with it, but we're not quite there yet. Um, okay, so let me quickly run the test. Uh, this will take a few seconds. If it doesn't work, we can always switch to a pre run version, but it's kind of fun. So right now it's uh, trying to actually deploy the contract. Um, what we can see here uh, is like, look at the code. Uh, can you guys see the code? It's reasonably viewable. Um, uh, so what it did was it went here, created the tester, uh, and then it deployed it. So it constructed the contract. Um, so that's what happened here. Uh, then it signed the transaction using uh, EVM, using the uh, the key using the EVM format. Um, uh, then it it uh, submitted a a message, or basically it called the um, uh, the EVM uh, bridge contract uh, with this this custom message. This message here is a quote unquote legacy EVM message. It has a, a nonce gas price, gas amount, et cetera, um, uh, and it includes the input is the contract itself. Again, this is an EVM message, not a Filecoin message. Um, uh, you can see here that it worked. Uh, let's actually go down and see what actually happened. Uh, so if we look at the Okay, I had this open. There it is. Uh, so basically, what this did was it invoked uh, this invoked actor method here, um, which went down here. Let's try to find where it actually. Okay, there it goes. Uh, so once it goes through some testing stuff, um, it executed the message. No, oh, that's the wrong thing. Fine. Uh, so. I think it actually did because I can't drill through the code here. Let me just reopen the file. Um, I think it actually did was it, it eventually called this function here, this create contract function, um, uh, which takes the signed transaction uh, and it constructs. So it uses a bunch of stuff here to actually construct a, an FBM actor. Um, uh, and then it actually executes the, the EVM bytecode on chain inside Wasm. So this is all happening like this here. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. This here is the bridge actor. Uh, this is actually running as an actor inside Wasm. Um, so actually, let's go, back, let's go back to the top. Sorry. Um, uh, so at the top, this is the bridge actor and this is the definition of the bridge actor. Um, uh, we ended up calling into process transaction to actually execute the transaction uh, inside the Wasm container, inside the FBM. Uh, that process the transaction it uh, uh, then Steph, uh, unfortunately we're at time. We have very little time. Are you able to show a message being sent to this contract? Yeah. Well, so if you look down here, all right. It. No, no worries. Uh, yeah, it, it is working. Yeah, I don't think it actually sent this. This test specifically. Sorry, I did not write the test. This test does not actually send a message, as far as I understand. It just it's all sends a message to the bridge actor, which then constructs the EVM actor. It doesn't send a message to the EVM actor itself. Got it. Got it. Yeah. 
I just wanted to talk about what's next. Uh, we have several lines of work that are opening up where uh, the team is working on, on, on the prototype. There's a bunch of things that we know that we need to go through and continue building out on the prototype. This uh, The work that we do here is then gonna feed into the technical design. So there's a really nice feedback loop there. Uh, we're also working on technical design. Some of the more, most critical ones are uh, account abstraction, the universal stable F4 address class and so on. So uh, feel free to, uh, to tune into the repos for that. Uh, there's also going to be a set of EVM focused uh, community RFPs that we're going to be opening up. So things like solidity libraries and precompiles uh, for interfacing with built in actors, uh, automated stat test and deployment of existing Ethereum contracts from like things like open Zeppelin uh, libraries and so on, uh, and a bunch of other things. And also we're going to be starting uh, and Ali and Dragon are going to lead much of the charge here, uh, a new early builders cohort. Uh, that is focused on uh, on use case building. The previous cohort uh, or the existing cohort, the one that's running now, is focused on tooling, and this one is going to be focused on use use case building uh, using Ethereum tooling, existing Ethereum tooling, and deploying on the on on the Fiverr network. So that's all from the FEM team today. Thanks a lot.